in this week's episode of Meet the Plough, we've got a record breaker. He's only gone and trumped Nick Fado, isn't he? Let's go and meet Harry Ellis. So we're with the very talented Harry Ellis. How are you doing today, mate? You okay? Very well, you? Uh, can't complain, the sunshine, yeah, bit cold. Day. Can't have it all though, can we? No, it's a beautiful day. Just going to ask you a few questions, we dive straight in. Yep. Um, so Harry, what age did you pick up a club and who or what inspired you to play golf? Uh, 18 months officially at a, a family party apparently. Yeah, I was very, very young when I picked up a plastic golf club and um, a few of people in my family were, were playing golf at the time. Uh, we had a bit of football and a bit of golf in the family. So between the two, I grew up playing playing both sports and um, I just, I think I started competing when I was around six, seven in some in some very junior golf tournaments. They seem a long time ago now, yeah. but um, yeah, so basically very much through the, the family bloodline and, uh, and also inspiration from the likes of Tiger growing up. Um, for me, yes, I, I, I was very young uh, during the period where he was at his very best. And I think uh, seeing what he did, as well as enjoying the sport, um, I, I, in the end, down the line, just loved the uh, individualism of the, of the sport. I thought it was, it was so good. Perfect, love that. So what's your best round you've had and where? Uh, last year, actually, I would have to say. Uh, Cron Sercier. Uh, it was the Olivia, Bar uh, Olivia Barras Trophy um, and it was, uh, it's a tournament that happens every year in Switzerland at Cron Sercier where they play the Amiga Masters. Lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, managed to just, uh, I managed to shoot 59 which was pretty special. Uh, wow. It's such an iconic venue, you know, Seve obviously had many memories there, the tour play there every single year. Um, the That's second, fantastic. Yeah, second round 59 and, and qualified me for the Amiga Masters this year. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting back up there in the summer. Wow, uh, that is brilliant. Yeah. Very good. Um, what's the best shot you've ever hit? Um, I think I have to go to... In more recent times, uh, that's, a tough, that's a really tough question. I know, but, it's a tough one. Um, I think in more recent times, I'd have to go to the, the second shot I hit into uh, Raw St George's on the 18th in the final of the British Amateur. Love um, that. I was up against it. I got a bit fortunate coming in. Um, the wind was hard off the left. Um, it's, it's just a really tough, tough hole. Um, I hit a really good swing in there into the middle of the green. I remember that and I thought that was... that was quite pivotal at that time. Um, and yeah, I, I would say that's up there, but actually, Maybe in the in the sim in, in the same match um, on the uh, 16th hole at the at the greenside bunker, that was another one that I know Thomas Bjorn had a, a arguably lost the open there when when it was played. Um, but for me, it was quite fortunate. I hit a really good shot and continued the match, and then lead on to the the shot I hit into 18. So that's vivid memories, yeah. Good I think. man. It's Love a tough that. question though. That is, the, just, that you, is hit, you hit so many, and you you know I'm not very good at always always, always seeing the positives. So. Uh, I forget about the good yeah, ones. No, of course. <laughs> it's good though. It's, it's good to catch up on that. Um, what's your biggest achievement in golf so far? Um, it's a really tough one. Um, obviously, your wins. You, you think about your wins. You know, for me, uh, I had a couple of amateur win, amateur wins that sort of one at a younger age, and then one after going through a bit of family tragedy and coming out on the other end, um, winning the British Amateur. Um, Beating Nick Faldo's record. Yeah, I think being 16 and winning the English Amateur at that time, you know, there's a lot of good players in that field. It's a big field. I know yeah. it goes down to match play. Mm. I think that was something that gave me the belief at, at my later teens to, to, to really kick on in the game and, and um, gave me that inspiration to keep pushing for more out of myself. And uh, like I said, there was things that happened after that. And I went to the US and, you know, British Amateur is definitely up there. I mean, God, to, to have the opportunities that I've been lucky to have. Um, I'm very, very grateful for that victory as well at the British Amateur. But yeah, I think there's also some some things that you, not always the wins, but I'm proud of, you know, how I've been able to, you know, since I've turned pro, it's not always been that easy for mm. me um, in terms of my own doing. And I think uh, I've been I've been quite proud lately of how I've been slowly but surely uh, getting through it. And, and, and I feel like I'm improving and, and getting better. And I think it's just a matter of time now. Good man. And I hear you're a, a member at Wentworth. Yeah, yeah. It's not too shabby at all. How's no, that? Very lucky. How's that being a member there? I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's a, everyone's dream, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I joined as a junior member again around when I was like 15 or 16. And um, partly because my, 
my uh, I joined when my coach was Christian Baker was was the head pro there for God knows how many years, and I felt that I needed somewhere to you know that was a good facility, a good environment, and, and Wentworth offers all of that. And um, sure does. And I've been very lucky that the club have really supported me and looked after me for the last. Where are we now? Uh, four, seven, eight years now. Uh, time just ticks by, um, but it's a fantastic place to be. You know, my my ultimate one day will be will be trying to win the BMW around there. Um, and I hope you do. Yeah. I can say that I've been I know you, exactly. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so many. The golf course, the West Course itself. I mean, obviously there's three courses there, but the West Course itself is so it's iconic hard. now, isn't it? It's hard. It's iconic. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it always brings a great champion. If you look back at the champions, it always brings a really good champion. Um, but yeah, I'd love to. Our next step is not just being a member, but then then having the opportunity to play in the BMW would be fantastic. Fantastic. And your last question. What's your guilty pleasure? Uh, Could ooh. be anything. Guilty pleasure. Um, chocolate digestive biscuit. That's that's. I, li I like a bit of chocolate. I'm not going to lie. Chocolate digestive. Bit of tea. I, you, you nice have, tea. And... I don't drink tea, but I have. I know that's that sounds strange, but I um, I'm very fussy what I drink. But uh, chocolate digestive. Every time I go for one, I have to have two. Fantastic. Just the way it is. Love that. Yeah. Um, right. Very quickly. Just on the end of this, we're going to go with some word associations. I'm going to give you a word. Okay. You've just got to tell me what the first thing that comes okay. to your head. Ooh, okay. okay, you ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Oh, it's tough. Right, pink. Uh, Barbie. Shank. Uh, draw. <laughs> on the next one. <laughs> Slow play. Uh, head off. Moist. Oof. English English winter. Nice. Table. Uh, food. Nice. Golf. <laughs> Frustration. <laughs> Driver. Uh, launch. Coffee. Uh, cake. Weather. Unpredictable. Cold. Layers. Jamaica. Fun. Harry, absolute thanks, pleasure, man. my friend. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. It. Thank you, no thanks. I enjoyed it.